Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles Zen Photography. Over the last few months I've covered various settings on cameras like white balance, picture controls, the different metering modes you can have like matrix, center weighted, spot metering. Today I just want to quickly go over exposure compensation. What is it? How to use it? And when you should use it. When we shoot in either shutter priority or aperture priority, the camera tries to give us a correct exposure. But it doesn't succeed all the time. This is when we need to use the exposure compensation button here. I'll put up a little screenshot here of it. It looks like a little plus and minus button on your camera, depending what camera you use, depending where it is. On mine, it's just near my shutter button here. Now when we are in shutter priority or aperture priority, the camera tries to give us a correct exposure. But I'll show you what happens sometimes. I'm actually on a platform and I'm going to shoot across the bay here and you'll see what I mean. Now I'm in shutter priority, ISO 100, my ISO is fixed, it's not auto ISO. I'm shooting at f5.6 and my shutter speed is 1 1250th and we can see we're quite well underexposed, you can see in this image here. But watch what happens if I actually shoot away into the shade here. Look at that, our exposure is correct. And you might say like, why couldn't the camera give us two exposures correctly exposed? Well, it depends on the scene that you're shooting. When I'm shooting across the river here, I've got a very bright sky and although the water looks the same brightness it's actually quite darker. So the camera is trying to give us a 50-50 split between the very bright sky and the darker river here. This is when we need exposure compensation. So if I take another photo exactly the same spot, okay so it's showing me according to my histogram here I'm nearly two stops underexposed so I press the shutter exposure button and I'll dial in 1.7 stops. Take another photo, look at that, correctly exposed. The sky looks quite bright but what are our settings now? Our previous setting was 1 1250th of a second. Now it's 1 400th of a second. So we've actually slowed our shutter speed down which means we're bringing in more light. This is in aperture priority. If I do the same thing in shutter priority, I'll reset the exposure compensation to zero. I'll take a photo. Look at that, the same thing. I'd set my shutter speed to 1250th of a second because that was what my original exposure was. My aperture is f5.6, exactly the same has my aperture priority mode. So it doesn't matter which mode you're in, whether you're in aperture priority or shutter priority. Now I just selected 1250th, but I can dial this down to 400th of a second. Take a photo. It's still going to give me the same underexposed image because all the camera's doing is regulating my aperture according to my shutter speed. And the only way I could get a correct exposure is by dialing in 1.7 EV over, take a photo, beautiful, correctly exposed. So to get a correct exposure shooting across the river here, I needed 1.7 EV extra to get a correct exposure. Now watch what happens if I don't reset my exposure compensation and I take a photo in this direction. My image is so overexposed. Why? Because the light is so different. We had a lot of strong light out here and not much light out here. This is why when we use exposure compensation we have to reset it whenever we change directions. What I should have done was reset my exposure compensation to zero, come over here and take a photo. Beautiful, correctly exposed. Now, what happens if I actually just faced in a different direction? Well, the same thing. Make sure I'm on zero, take a photo. And if I need to adjust my exposure compensation, then I do so. 
So exposure compensation is just like you are using the camera in manual mode. You are controlling the exposure. You're telling the camera it's underexposed, it's overexposed. I'm going to override it by so much. So it was underexposed. So we decided to override the camera by 1.7 stops. If I was shooting overexposed, I might say, okay, well, I have to reduce the exposure. For example, here, if I take a photo and I feel it's a bit too bright, I can say, okay, well, I'm going to put some negative EV. So 0.7 to reduce my exposure. Take a photo. You might look and say, okay, well, I'm much happier with this image. And it all depends on the scene that you're photographing. This is when we should use exposure compensation. Exposure compensation works in shutter priority and aperture priority, but it doesn't work in manual mode. Because in manual mode, you are controlling the whole triangle. You're controlling the ISO, you're controlling the aperture, and you're controlling your shutter speed. So there is no need for exposure compensation. But at times, in manual mode, you may need exposure compensation if you're using auto ISO. I use manual mode when I shoot wildlife, but I have it set up in auto ISO. So it's just like shooting in shutter priority or aperture priority. The camera is taking control of one of your settings. For me, it's taking control of ISO. So it might get it wrong sometimes. If I'm photographing an egret, which is a very bright white burn, it might say I'm overexposed. So I will have to dial in a negative EV so that the bird is not blown out. But if my next shot is of a crow, which is blackbird, then I might have to increase my exposure compensation so that I see all the detail in the blackbird. That is the only time that exposure compensation will work in manual mode. Now, earlier this morning, I photographed the sunrise at Nudgee Beach and I was facing away from the sun because there was no clouds just to get some golden glow on this mangrove tree with some water in the foreground, shooting an aperture priority. Now my camera settings were ISO 100, F11 and my shutter speed was 1 15th of a second. And you can see by this image here, I was well underexposed. Why? Because the sky was so bright and the foreground was so dark. The only way I could balance out the exposure was use exposure compensation and I dialed in one stop of exposure compensation to give me a correctly exposed image. Now the foreground might still look a little bit dark but my sky isn't blown out. Now when I get home and post process this image in Adobe Lightroom I could easily raise my dark areas, my shadows, but if I'd blown out the sky I couldn't do anything about that. I can't bring out a blown sky. So I just set up enough exposure compensation to get a correctly exposed image. And this is the beauty of using exposure compensation if you're not used to shooting in manual mode. You can easily control your exposure whether it is too bright or too dark. Now I hope that this video tutorial on exposure compensation has given you an idea of what exposure compensation is and how to use it effectively when you're out and about. And it doesn't matter whether you're shooting wildlife in shutter priority or landscapes in aperture priority, it's always good to know how to use exposure compensation to get a correctly exposed image. Now if you found value in this tutorial, give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.